Why do we give names to all the elements? No matter what we call them, it doesn't change the experiments. There's so much more behind each label. Here's the story of the names on the periodic table. The first name, hydrogen, means it likes to form water, while the last one sounds like a spell from Harry Potter. Silicon is named for a rock in the ground, and many more are called for where they are found. Sulfur is just sulfur as far back as we know, and calx and borax date from quite a while ago. This one's from a redstone, and this one's yellow, and one's from a rock named for this Russian fellow. Chromium's compounds have colorful sheens. Bromine stinks, and chlorine wafts green. Bismuth starts white until its colors come out. Zinc has pointy crystals and barium stout. Indium's not for India, as you may have learned. It's just one of four color spectra that this bunch makes when they burn. They tasted aluminum and thought it was bitter. Rhodium's rose, iodine's violet, and zirconium, a gold-like glitter. Speaking of gold, the name's different from the symbol slapped on. Our mouths speak shining yellow while we abbreviate shining dawn. Many other names don't match abbreviations, and those can be confusing situations. Potash or callium comes from burnt wood, while nadir or soda made headaches feel good. For a few more, one language can't settle. Like, ferrum is Latin, but iron's a holy metal. Tungsten in America beat Wolfram from across the pond, but Niobium, not Columbium, that compromise spawned. Many names are the products of reactions. Bring forth acid, or nitre, or charcoal transactions. They found osmium thanks to its distinctive smell, and fluorine and fluorspar, which makes metals flow well. Antimony means dead monk, or never alone. And lithium's the first alkali that was found in a stone. Lithic, I-T-H-I-C, meaning stone. Splitting this mineral gave elements two, praseodymium the green twin and neodymium the new. There's a group of idle gases that don't react. One was named by a child, little known fact. Dysprosium's not the only one playing hard to get. For a long time, ores held lanthanum's secret. Athetine's unstable and will quickly decay, like these radioactives, all three meaning ray. Technetium's so rare that we found it by making it, and these are so new that they haven't been named yet. The Greeks thought molybdenum might have been lead, while the Spaniards' little silver was platinum instead. Cadmium's in calamine for Cadmus the Prince, and lots more from mythology have been added since. There's goblins and devils and even mighty Thor, who walked on Iris' rainbow to Asgard's door. There's Vanitas, Tantalus, Ceres, and the Titans, the giver of fire and the one whose light brightens. Speaking of light, we found helium in the sun, and Mercury, that liquid silver, is a planetary one. There's an asteroid, Earth, and even the moon, Uranus, Pluto, and also Neptune. There's a funny story behind 93. It was named for Italy by Enrico Fermi, but his science was wrong, and when his Nobel came along, he snuck off to the States to be free. A river, state, college, a lab called Livermore, and one mine in Sweden gave us names for four. Cyprus and Magnesia, places so old. Russia and Scandinavia, places so cold. We could draw a map of Europe with the places that remain, but is Gallium for France or the discoverer's name? The rest are for people, but those are pretty clear. They found half this stuff. They deserve to be here. Thanks for watching and stay curious. I'm officially out of rhyme, so subscribe to see more of us? In 1988, Isaac Asimov predicted that we would all own computers connected to massive libraries and be able to access digital teachers and reference materials on demand, allowing us to learn at our own pace wherever we want about whatever we choose. So, basically, this. <laughs>